Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Seven Strategies to Get Through the COVID Crisis in 2021. It's a mini series brought to you exclusively by Afin Bank. And uh, well, let's express our gratitude to Afin Bank. And uh, in this series, we have covered a lot of ground now. This is episode six. And uh, well, I'm, my name is Peter Lam, founder of Pelican Concepts, company that helps uh, business owners, SMEs to grow and become more successful and build solid businesses. Uh, I'm also the author of this best-selling, award-winning book called Profit Makes Your Business. So um, if you want to get a copy, it's available on bookshelves. It's also available to you uh, if you're an Afin Bank customer at a very special price of 39 ringgit instead of the usual 60 in the bookshelves. So today we're going to talk about operational resilience. So in the first five episodes, we've covered things like uh, financial resilience, team and organizational resilience, leadership resilience, revenue generation. And in the previous episode, we talked about marketing resilience, how to recover back your business and build new revenue streams and new income streams. Today, we're gonna to cover operational resilience. And uh, yeah, before, before that, let me just mention that the COVID will accelerate the move towards a digital economy, yeah? So COVID just makes it faster for everybody to move towards digital. And that means not only Facebook uh, marketing, it means total digital, you know? So you got to get your knowledge up, look at things like artificial intelligence, look, like, look at things like industrial 4.0, if you haven't already, if you're in manufacturing, um, look at your digital marketing and so on and so forth. So, um, there have been a lot of disruptions in supply because of lockdowns and all that due to COVID. And a lot of these things are like things delayed, disruption in supply, breakdowns uh, in the supply chain from raw material to finished goods and so on. So a lot of issues have been, uh, have been uh, created uh, by this COVID crisis. And what we need to do is understand the dynamics behind it so that we can get a better grip on it, no? So one is, of course, supply and demand forecast. Um, and then you've got to look at the balance of power between the customers and the suppliers. So for example, if you look at the glove industry, you know, so the glove industry, there is a massive shortage now. So um, countries that used to keep two or three months stock supply for their customers, like in America, now are down to just two or three weeks supply. That's a big, big difference. So if a hospital or some other customer requires gloves, you may not have the socks for them. So it puts a lot of pressure. So the power now is with the suppliers, the glove manufacturers. That's why they're all increasing their selling prices and so on. And the constraint for the glove manufacturer is not making more factories or building more factories. That can be done in six to nine months. The constraint if you have the land, you can do it in six months. If you don't have the land, you got to get a land first, uh, build a factory. But the constraint is the supply of latex, nitrile latex. That's where the shortfall is now. The problem is to produce, to increase the capacity of nitrile latex, companies like Sintoma, companies like Kamho, companies like Aozeon and so on, these guys need two to three years because it's a very complicated business of extracting chemicals from the petroleum industry. And so, so it's, it's not so easy. So the shortage of latex supply to the glove manufacturers is causing that constraint, okay? But look at what's happening. There's also a lot of new competition coming in. People like Ma Singh, for example, in Malaysia, who are in property, never been in gloves before, are now going to go into gloves. And many other companies have jumped onto the bandwagon. So there's gonna be new supply, uh, sorry, new entrants coming in, new players coming in. So this just adds to the competition. And uh, of course, there could also be substitute products, but in the case of gloves, probably not. No? So these are things we need to look at to build our operational resilience. So operational resilience is actually a set of techniques that allow people, processes, and information systems to adapt to changing systems. So the key thing, the three key things there are people, processes, and systems. So you could have good systems, no? forecasting systems, um, operational management systems, critical order systems, inventory management systems, 
delivery systems, distribution systems, and you need people to be behind all these systems. Okay, so otherwise you you will be caught, and then you need so you need to adapt to changing patterns, and in this disruptive age, changes can happen very very fast. Okay, so you need to be agile, and you also need to collaborate. So what I mean by collaboration, I give you an example, no. So if you are a group of uh, F&B outlets and you buy, let's say, tomatoes or you need some, some vegetables or whatever is the ingredient, and you as an individual outlet, maybe you only need one case of tomatoes a week. So if you order one case a week, the supplier may say, sorry, I can't deliver that small quantity. But what you do is you collaborate with 10 or 20 other cafes who also need tomatoes, and then you make a group purchase. So that, that's called collaboration. Another example is, um, I don't know, you guys may have heard of this, but the Adun for Petaling, uh, Petaling Slatan, uh, YB uh, Rajiv Rajesh Krishnan, he has actually negotiated with the, uh, what do you call the, the COVID test people to bring the cost down from about 180 ringgit to 70 ringgit. Now that is a massive, massive um, work. Uh, reduction, no? So by bringing it down from 180 to, to 70, you're making it affordable to a lot of people. So more people can get tested for COVID. And if you go to PJ Old Town, you see a long queue outside Polyclinic, uh, one of the one of the clinics who are, who are able to offer it at 70 ringgit, queuing up to do their tests. So this is where you can collaborate by grouping together as a group of clinics and then negotiating with the supplier of the test kits bring the price down. So these are some examples of what you can do. And of course, number three, in this age of uh, sustainable environment and all that, you need to make sure that you reduce your carbon footprint and things like that. Okay, four steps to tackle your supply changes. So basically, you got to do an audit, no? conduct an end-to-end -end supply chain risk assessment. What are the risk points? You know, And then uh, from there, map out a strategy and uh, implement some reporting tools so that you can monitor you know, what is the situation? And then the third step is really to improve and invest in your supply chain capabilities. So maybe instead of getting supply from just one or two sources, you need to have two or three sources so that you mitigate risk. If one supplier cannot deliver, at least you have another supplier, you know, things like that. And the fourth one is actually to focus on process automation. So how do you automate? So companies like Harta Lega, you know, they are very advanced in terms of their automation. So they're relying less and less on human labor, for example. So there's less and less human risk and less and less uh, vulnerability. You know, if, if your staff, uh, with some of your staff cannot COVID, at least you don't have to rely so much on them. So the industry average, I think, is close to three people per million gloves or something. Theirs is only 2.2 and you're going to bring it down to 1.8. So those are the things we're talking about. Okay, so this is what we've been covering over the last few episodes. We've been talking about building resilience for the whole organization, um, leadership and personal uh, resilience, as well as resilience for your team. And uh, last week we talked, uh, last episode, we talked about building resilience for your revenues. So if your normal business gets caught down because of lower purchasing power, people being at home and so on, what can you do to build new revenue streams? And of course, uh, financial resilience. So we have covered all those things. The next step in the next episode, we're going to talk about how to put all this into action, how to come up with a dynamic action plan so that you can implement all these things. So that's it for this episode. I hope you've got a few nuggets. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to email us. Um, that's my office email, success at peterlamcoach.com. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. And I'll be happy to uh, answer any of your questions that you may have or clarify anything that you need to clarify. So uh, once again, thanks to Afin Bank for bringing us this series and uh, look forward to your feedback. And stay tuned for the episode seven. <laughs>